Hi everyone, Matt here from Proof Fly Fishing. Um, in this video I'm going to answer a few questions about silk and then give a few tips and tricks for working with it um, to get better results and kind of make the whole experience a little easier, uh, especially if you're just starting out with silk. Um, so the first question is why would somebody want to use silk over nylon? Um, nylon's uh, less expensive, it's uh, more available, there's a wider range of colors. Um, the main difference in silk, I'm going to show you two rods here. This first one is a, um, a G2 by Scott Rods, and this is a ferrule wrap. And as you can see in this picture, I can look at this ferrule wrap and I can see the individual strands of thread. This is wrapped in nylon, and when I look at it, um, it's pretty easy. I can see there's clear lines kind of along the blank where that thread was laid and packed next to each other. Now I'm going to lay another rod here. This is one I just wrapped the other day. This one's done in silk. Now what you'll notice immediately here, neither of these are color preserved threads, um, but what you'll see in the silk is it just looks like the color was kind of dropped into place. Like it was like the blanks almost died. Um, and the reason for that is the diameter of silk is much smaller than, than the diameter of nylon. And so once you put finish on it, what you're not able to see are the lines between the two. You end up with a smoother wrap over the guides. Um, it's a different look, you know, and depending on what you're going for and kind of the rod you're working on. You know, maybe nylon's a preferred look, but the reason silk is sought and why it's um, considered, uh, I guess, probably a nicer way to, a nicer material to wrap a rod with is for this reason primarily. So I can see no, I can't discern that this is wrapped with thread, um, no matter how close I look at it. Um, whereas this wrap, it's pretty obvious what's going on. I can even see the tag ends here um, under a small little metallic trim band that they did. You can see them right, right there. Um, but that's the main difference. As far as strength goes, um, you know, silk is a natural protein fiber. Um, whereas nylon, of course, is um, uh, man-made. But silk has an unbelievable tinsel strength to it. Um, in its comparable diameters, silk is um, equal to or stronger sometimes than steel. So there's no performance difference um, when choosing between the two. Um, in a minute, we're going to switch over, and I'm going to actually do a few wraps with silk and kind of show you some different characteristics of it, how it's similar and how it's a little bit... How it requires a little bit different handling um, than nylon. So we'll switch over to that now and uh, we'll get started. Okay, we're back. Um, so I have a, a clear blank in the rod wrapping jig and I've got silk um, running through a book. Today I'm using um, the silk we carry on the site. Uh, it's called Kimono and I'm going to be using a mossy oak color today just so you can see it against the blank a little bit. Um, so again, um, another question I get as far as tensioning silk. Some people say you have to tension just the spool because it's such a delicate material that if you tension the thread that you'll fray it. Um, and that might be true if you're running it through like a metal tensioner. Some people use tensioners from sewing machines. Um, I just make sure you check it for any sort of rough surfaces or burrs. But my preferred method is to run it through a book. If you've watched my other videos, um, you can kind of see how that works. But again, nothing fancy, no real special handling as far as tensioning it. Some people kind of overthink that a little bit. Um, so just a little comparison here. I have a standard um, size A nylon thread here. And I'm just going to hold them kind of tight. I'm not sure exactly how well you're going to be able to see the diameter difference there. But depending on the silk, it can be, you know, half the size, sometimes significantly smaller. Um, kimono is kind of a mid-range silk. Um, it's easy to work with if you're just starting out. Um, and you can get, you know, fantastic results with it with just a little bit of practice. So um, nothing fancy here. We're just going to tie on my tensioner here a second just like we do um, any other thread right so the thread goes over the top and I just kind of trap that silk 
as I would as if I were starting any wrap. So I have three wraps on there now and I can just kind of pack that into place. There's a lot of questions I get about the diameter of silk. Oh, it's so difficult to work with because it's so fine. And there's a couple tricks. It is very easy to overlap silk when you're starting out. So one little trick that I use or I, when I teach people is to lead the silk a little bit on the wrap. Now I'm going to show you what that means. I'm just going to cut this tag end off. So when we lead silk, what we're doing basically is creating an intentional gap between the main body of the wrap that's already laid down and the thread that is currently being wrapped. So I'm going to do kind of an exaggerated version of this here. Um, just adjust one thing a second. There we go. So again, this is exaggerated. You don't necessarily want to do it spaced this much. But as you can see, I've got a lot of space between each individual wrap there. And now what that's going to do is keep that any chance of that thread overlapping itself uh, away. And then once, so once I get four or five wraps on that blank, I simply take a burnishing tool uh, of some sort and I just pack those, those wraps in place. Just like that. And again, normally I wouldn't lead it quite so much, but I wanted you to be able to see it um, so you get a sense of, uh, of the idea of what, what's going on there. Um, so we can keep going. If you do overlap, basically how it'll show up when you're done, you'll have, I'll see if I can overlap this once just to show you. You'll be looking down at your wrap and I'm going to move some of this light away so we can hopefully see it a little bit better. And what you'll notice is the wrap will be even for most of it, and then you'll see like a line. And you'll think, oh, maybe I didn't pack that or, or, or something else happened. But really what happened is you ran the silk over top of itself, kind of creating a double layer of silk. And that... Um, created this line um, in the wrap. So to get rid of that, you can simply unwrap it. And then if you have a bunch of slack, you can just use your finger to provide tension on it. And again, we're creating a little bit of space between those wraps. And now that we've got those in place, we're just going to pack that silk together. One thing that you'll want to keep in mind, and some people don't like to pack their wraps for some reason, and with nylon to an extent you can get away with it, with silk you can't. Um, every four to six wraps or so, stop and pack the silk. Silk has a little more natural stretch to it than nylon will, and also the fine diameter. Once you put finish on there, if you haven't packed and you see a gap, or there's a gap there that maybe you can't see right now, but when you put finish on, you'll see the blank through it. So make sure when you, um, you're wrapping, take the time and pack the silk. Now, you don't have to pack it super hard. You pack it too hard and you can actually um, overlap it on itself. So don't, don't go crazy with it, but... Um, the next thing I want to um, show you, I'm going to tie a tape a guide in place. Um, let me find one a second. And what I want to show you is getting silk up over the foot of the guide. Sometimes it's very easy uh, to get to that guide and you try to figure out, oh, the silk's so fine, I can't get it up over the guide foot and have it look nice. So we're going to tape a guide in place here a sec. 
and I'll show you. This is a trick I believe I covered in another video, but uh, it never hurts to kind of get to it again. So I'm just going to kind of skip over to where this guide is, and I'm going to go right up on the guide foot. I'm not going to be shy about how far up on that guide foot I go. Um, it might even be as much as like a 32nd of an inch up on up onto the guide foot And I don't care if there's a gap over that toe of the guide right now. We're just getting up at the guide So when I get up there I'm going to do a few wraps I'm going to build up What I'm going to call like a little thread dam and then we're going to move that dam into place So now I've got probably five or six wraps on top of the guide foot there's still a gap. The toe of that guide is still exposed. I'll show it to you right there. You can see it kind of poking through the silk. So what we're going to do is take our burnishing tool and very gently we're going to work our way around that guide and we're going to move that kind of bundle of silk closer to the toe of the guide. And we're just going to keep doing that until it covers the toe completely. It doesn't have to be huge movement with every one, but we are moving that whole bundle. You can probably see that move a little bit every time. And now we're just about there. Do a couple more. And this is only for guides that are giving you an issue. Like sometimes stripping guides can be an issue. If you're using good snake guides, generally there's not too much problem here. But there it is. Now we're up on the guide. Um, the toe of that guide is completely concealed under the silk. And there was no problem at all kind of getting up uh, onto the guide foot. Because we just started on top of it, created a little bundle, and then moved it in place. Um, you don't have to wrap with a ton of tension to make this work either. Um, that's another probably error that people do make with silk is that they wrap with way too much tension to the point where that silk is just being stretched. Wrap with the same tension you wrap nylon with. I would say medium tension. You don't want slack in your, in your line, but you don't need that um, pulled so tight uh, like it's a guitar string or something. So that's pretty much it for silk. Um, make sure you pack it. When you're done with silk, when you get the whole wrap done, um, again, we're going to use our burnishing tool. This is the handiest thing to have in your hand. I, it's in my hand for every single wrap I do. Um, you can gently kind of polish that silk. Now why do we do that? Um, Silk is, you know, it's a, it's a fiber, and when a fiber is wound around a tight diameter, like a blank, you get fibers that will break loose from it, and those will stick out a little bit. Sometimes you'll see them, sometimes you won't, um, but you don't have to go crazy, and what burnishing is doing is taking those little fibers that may have, like, broken or be sticking up, and it's just polishing them into place. So the end result is a wrap that's a lot smoother than it would be otherwise. But again, don't go crazy. If you've done trim bands in silk, stay away from those with a burnisher because unless you're extremely careful, you know, a four turn trim wrap does not have that much thread holding it in place. So you go over it with like a burnishing tool and you're like polishing it away, it's just gonna come loose on you and then you'll have to wrap it again. So, um, what's the end result of, of this? Um, so, this is with a little bit of Threadmaster on it. It needs another coat so you can kind of see some of the, uh, the silk um, on the top of that, but with one more coat, you know, it'll disappear. But yeah, the color you get, it just looks like the color was poured into place. It's just beautiful. And the smaller diameter creates a tighter wrap. Um, it doesn't bulge out from the blank quite as much, which is kind of a nice uh, professional aesthetic there. So any questions, um, shoot me an email. But again, we're using kimono silk. And I finished this guide with Threadmaster Lite that was cut uh, roughly a third with uh, with uh, I think I used turpentine or white gas. So pretty easy. It goes on simple and the finished result is is well worth the effort. All right, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.